Biobalance HealthCast episode 181 answers to your questions about hormones. Biobalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of Biobalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Welcome again to the Biobalance HealthCast. This week, Kathy and I are going to continue uh, our responses to reader questions uh, or viewer questions. We have uh, a a pretty strong presence in social media, and so we have gotten, uh, as as we always invite people, if you have questions, if you have comments, if there's some way that you want to get in touch with us, you can do it in a number of ways. Uh, You can go to thesecretfemalehormone.com. You can go to drkathymoppin.com, biobalancehealth.com, brettnewcomb.com. All all of those are ways that you can get in touch with us. And as a result, people do that. And we get questions uh, through Facebook. Uh, at facebook.com slash Dr. Kathy Maupin. Mm-hmm. Uh, we get questions off of YouTube from these podcasts. Uh, we get questions from Biobalance Health, uh, from Dr. Kathy, from, from all the websites that we've talked about. And so in order to honor those questions or comments, uh, we periodically take a podcast to reference them, especially the ones that we think have a more global application. We do try to respond specifically and individually to everybody that contacts us in an in a appropriate time frame, but we collect these and go through them and then periodically we decide to take a podcast to address them because the, the questions or points that are raised are more universally applicable. So today we're going to do that again. Mm-hmm. Well, and one of the first um, questions that we have from drkathymoppin.com mm-hmm. is from Roseanne. And um, Roseanne read our book and she has a problem with sleep. And she has been to everyone and every kind of doctor there is, and she's been placated and and she used the word outraged that no one would help be able to help her or mm-hmm. would even tr- attempt to help her. Um, and she wants to know what we could offer for that, what I could offer for that. And and honestly, most she's already tried most of the the uh, bedtime, the change your bedtime, change your change, uh, drink something warm before you go to sleep, the hygiene, the sleep hygiene stuff that everybody suggests. She's tried all that. Uh, But truly, testosterone is the hormone of sleep. And it's one of the things that happens to us as we get older, as our testosterone drops, our REM sleep goes away and our restful sleep goes away. So we go through a few stages of sleep and then we wake up and we don't go through the restful sleep. So we have lots of different cycles. We've talked about that before. Through the night, we have lots of different cycles, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and and you're supposed to go through those cycles. She's having one, two, one, two, one, two. Right, and so she's not getting the restful sleep and Mm -hmm. she's sleeping lightly and waking up easily and, and she's not able to recuperate from that. So her question is, what do I do next? Right. And uh, my answer is testosterone is the hormone of sleep, and testosterone does get your sleep back after you've gone through your 40s or 50s, depending on when it when you hit critical level. However, one of the things that you have to uh, remember is that you still have to do those other things. You still have to have a, a good sleep schedule. You can't just right. stay up half the night and then expect to be rested the next day because you're afraid to go to sleep. Some people, and I don't know if this is her case, have to have sleep studies to make sure that they don't have a problem with sleep apnea that's keeping them from sleeping in right. well. So we rule out all the medical reasons, and it appears that she's already done so. And then we treat with testosterone. And honestly, that's the key to a lot of my patients' fatigue is that they now sleep. They sleep well. They dream. They they actually feel rested when they wake up. And that's all to do with testosterone. And we found that first with men. Mm-hmm. All the studies were on men and, and sleep. And then they did a few studies on women as well. And so now we know that it works for us as well. But I have thousands of patients that would tell you that they know it works for them too because that's been their experience. Well, and... Dreaming is an interesting point. They start dreaming. Uh, I had a lot of patients that would ask me when they went on antidepressants, you know, they'd start having bizarre dreams. Right. And this is not the kind of dream that you have when you have restful sleep. 
Yeah. Uh, so the testosterone provides the restful sleep, and often the people that take the testosterone can come off of the antidepressants. So mm -hmm. that's win-win. But there are two other points that are in Roseanne's letter that okay. I think mm -hmm. are worth referencing. One, she talks about having a thyroid crisis and, and going to the doctor and getting treated for that. Uh, but the lab tests that were run that said her thyroid was in the normal range were what the doctors were following, and she wasn't getting any better. Right. And so she kept insisting that they do something else and they change her dosage, mm -hmm. and she finally got to a better place, and her symptoms are ameliorating. But her concern was that the lab test certified her as normal, and she was upset about that. And we talk about that all the time. Right. That Treating a lab test isn't... I mean, we do lab. I use lab as guidelines, but if someone has the symptoms of thyroid deficiency and their lab test looks normal, what are you going to treat? You're not going to treat the lab test. You're treating the patient. And the patient, if the patient needs more thyroid, they need more thyroid. The downside to that is you just have to make sure that they don't have so much that they get a tachycardia so that they have too, a very fast heart rate. People can actually monitor that themselves. And oftentimes, if that happens, we divide the dose. We give some in the morning and some in the afternoon, and then that doesn't happen. So we can still give the same amount of thyroid that is necessary. And I follow basal body temperatures right. because the basal body temperature, rather than the lab test, is much more uh, attuned to what your body is receiving. Mm -hmm. it, it just doesn't show the hormone in the bloodstream. It shows what the hormone's doing. So if your temperature is below 97.9 in the morning before you get out of bed, then you have a most likely have a low thyroid. Right. And actually, if you are curious about this, and, and Roseanne wasn't writing to us about thyroid per se, she was just making the comment about the labs being qualifying her as normal. We've done a lot of discussion about the gender differences in uh, the way labs have been run, always defined normal as a man's rate right. and not as a woman's rate. That's and right. So we just recently did a podcast on thyroids where we discussed this whole topic. So if you are triggered by this conversation, mm -hmm. go back and look at our podcast on thyroids. It's just been out the last couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, then the other thing that Roseanne says in her letter that I think is relevant for us to comment on, because it's a, it's a significant reason that you wrote this book and that you are in practice doing what you're doing. She said she raised the issue of sleep problems with postmenopausal women uh, and was told there's nothing we can do about that. It's just the way it is for women when they get old. And if doctors are still saying that to women, They've missed the boat. That boat has sailed. There and if are they say there's no research, there's a lot of research on that. Yeah. And that's that's absolutely, I mean, research on estrogen and testosterone for sleep sleep deficiencies and, and sleep abnormalities. So they can look for that. Yes. And they can look, I mean, but if they say there, whenever a doctor says there is nothing written about that, you know they haven't looked because there's usually something written about almost everything. It may not be what they want to tell you, but it is. there's usually some article or some research done on almost every question you would possibly have. So you just have to find it. And then our next question comes from Lorraine, and I don't think it's the Lorraine show, which is a big uh, morning talk <laughs> show in, in London. But she says she's from the UK, mm -hmm. and she has a question about getting progesterone cream. And she says, I, I don't know where to get it in the UK. Can you help me? And oddly enough, you can. You can. Um, when we were when we were in London, we met with a bioidentical hormone doctor, uh, Dr. Marion Gluck, G-L-U-C-K. And she's delighted at the Gluck, Clinic, at the in Gluck Clinic, mm -hmm. Clinic in London on, what's the name of the, what, will be, no? It's number 61... Uh, it's a W. Wilpo Street. Wilpo, that's it? Yeah. Wilpo Street. And we talked to her for, she gave us a lot of time, and we compared notes on what we do and what we hope for for our patients. And she uses a lot of hormone cream. She uses progesterone cream. She's, she has her own pharmacy. So that is the place that I know of that will uh, be able to help Lorraine and her daughter who requires progesterone cream. And I, I think that's that's my best referral. There may be other doctors that I haven't found or I haven't talked to, but mm -hmm. she she is... No, it is a private clinic. It's a private it's, clinic. It's not it's, National it's, Health Service. It's not covered by National Health Service. No bioidentical hormones are. So if that's what you want, this is how you, you obtain it. She'll write the prescription and the pharmacy will fill it. So 
we we just hope that this referral will help you even across the ocean. So good luck. Yeah. And our next question is from Danielle. And Danielle says, I am male to female transgender. Could I use your services? And do you have any advice for me? And that's a very important question. And we are really glad to receive it because it gives Kathy a chance to respond to that issue uh, for Danielle and for others in similar circumstances. The, the treatment of transgender is a uh, multiple specialty treatment. It, it, of course, requires surgeons and it requires uh, hormone specialists and, and it requires a certain level of training, which I hate to say I don't have, but I do know where you can go to find a list of physicians who actually do transgender hormone replacement, and that is at the uh, College Pharmacy in Colorado, and you can just look them up on the web. They have, do they have lists of doctors who do provide different services, and they make bioidentical hormone pellets, and that is a, a good way for you to receive hormones, but the trick is, how do we overcome your own hormones? And I'm not sure exactly where you are in the process, but that's, that is a skill, and that takes a lot of, of uh, practice. So they have a list of, of physicians that actually treat transgender, and so that's where I would go if I yeah. were looking for that. So even though testosterone is both a female and male hormone, and Kathy treats both males and females, the combination specialist for, for transgender is a unique concern. And, and in and going from male to female, you have you have to use a lot of estrogen. Right. And that to overcome the testosterone and, and I'm not I'm not uh, That's an not your area. In that. So it would be a malpractice issue for yeah. Kathy without additional training to try to respond to you specifically. But she knows where you can go to get help from people that do have the training. And I wish you the best. Our next question is from Karen, and Karen says she's in a living hell for se the last several years. Mm -hmm. She is a triplet. She has uh, sisters who have cancer, breast cancer, got mm -hmm. breast cancer within triplet six sisters. months. Triplet sisters. Triplet sisters. Uh, amazingly. And they all got breast cancer within a six-month window of one mm -hmm. another. She apparently has not had that experience, but genetically she's going to be she's similar concerned. to her sister, so she's concerned. Mm -hmm. Then she goes on to say that sex for her is very painful. Uh, and she can't participate in sex anymore. And she lives in Florida, and she wants to know if you have any advice or support mm -hmm. that you could offer. So I thought it would be relevant to talk about uh, testosterone replacement and pellets with mm -hmm. regard to the issue of breast cancer. Yes. And then talk about the painful sex issue. Mm -hmm. And then what can she do if she's in Florida? There's, There are two different things we'll be talking about. One is breast cancer risk, and the other is people who already have breast cancer who have estrogen receptors, okay? okay? So let's talk about breast cancer risk first. Breast cancer risk, it means genetic risk and having several of the other things, obesity and things like that, that would put you at risk. However, when we talk about hormone replacement, estrogen replacement, they have, they have found in the last several years with all the studies that non-oral estrogen does not increase the risk of breast cancer or deep venous thrombosis. The key phrase there being non-oral. Non-oral. Yes. So if you, are, if you are at risk for breast cancer and if you absolutely need estrogen, then the safest estrogen is non-oral estrogen. Estrogen would help with the vaginal dryness that makes sex impossible, but it it doesn't mean you would never get breast cancer because if you have the gene for it, whether you're on estrogen or not, you may still get breast cancer. So your best, def your best defense is to get a mammogram every year with an ultrasound, not just right. a mammogram. Right. So those two together would be your best defense. But if you absolutely can't live without estrogen, then that then taking it non-orally would be your safest bet. It's all about risks and benefits. Then testosterone's another answer. Sometimes patients who are at risk, I give them a tiny bit of estrogen to help balance out their, um, their hormones and so they don't get so much facial hair and they, they don't have any of the side effects of testosterone that like hair loss that you might get if you only took testosterone. 
So I give them a little estrogen if they're accepting of it and then give them testosterone primarily. And that usually solves all the problems. If they still have vaginal dryness, I would then use local vaginal cream if they instead of upping the dose of estrogen. Mm -hmm. So that would be for at-risk patients. For patients who already have breast cancer with estrogen receptors, those patients are at this time not able to take estrogen even non-orally, but they can take they can use estrogen topically on their bottom to help help the vagina be better estrogenized and have more elasticity. However, testosterone is acceptable for breast cancer patients and has saved so many of my I have many patients who have had breast cancer who are on are on testosterone. Testosterone helps you fight cancer. It is not a cancer producing hormone. It is a cancer protection. So it stimulates your T cells and your T killer cells. And so you don't have the risk of having no immunity and having had breast cancer, then that just sets you up for some recurrence. Mm -hmm. Testosterone itself, especially pellet form has been tested uh, and has been shown to decrease recurrences in women with breast cancer. So that's what I would do um, if for your triplet sisters. Mm -hmm. And for you, then you can still have some estrogen and uh, get rid of all your symptoms. Now, being in Florida, I have a lot of people that fly to fly up to me from Florida. I don't have um, a great answer for Florida. I don't have an affiliate yet, but I'd be glad to train one. Yes. And again, go to the AMMG website right. to look for that. That's mm -hmm. a, an organization of doctors uh, internationally who specialize in the kind of treatments that you do and additional things mm -hmm. uh, for uh, management of positive aging. Mm -hmm. So perhaps there will be someone. And hormone in, replacement. And, and hormone replacement. So perhaps there will be someone in southwest Florida who's on the list that will be doing that. Also, it's an opportune place to mention, Kathy has been invited to give a speech about what she does to the AMMG, and they're having a convention in uh, Orlando mm -hmm. at the end of this month. So at the end of this month, she'll be there to do that. That's right. So our next question is from Donna, and Donna has apparently been to your website, uh, biobalancehealth.com, and downloaded all of the packet information. She's mm -hmm. ready to make an appointment, but she has a question for you. The, the blood panel that is asked for, requested in the paperwork that you give, uh, doesn't uh, ask for the test that distinguishes between chronic fatigue and fibromyalgia. Right. And she's already been diagnosed with one of those. And she wants to know if it would be helpful to get that blood test ordered as well. And and that's a good question. So she doesn't have to come in and, and waste any time right. getting treated. Sometimes I'll have somebody come in with fibromyalgia and by exam or by, by, um, by, uh, consultation, I'll find out that they are uh, they are not really probably fibromyalgia. They may be more chronic fatigue. So because of that, I order another set of blood tests, and I talk about it in the book. So that's that is the test she's talking about. And yes, I will. Um, I think she should get those blood tests before she comes in to talk to me to get the most bang for her buck, basically. Mm -hmm. So we can talk about all of it and get a good diagnosis. So. That would that would be something that I'll have my uh, nurse call her about. I have her email or email her about, and get the rest of the lab tests sent to her so we can talk about all of it. But one of the points then is if you have a specific diagnosis already that might be a factor, uh, then yes, you do want to get the blood test for those as well. You want to tell us yes ahead of time, like if you've had a deep venous thrombosis, uh, a blood clot, or a pulmonary emboli, then getting the uh, a panel of blood tests that tell us whether that's likely to recur or not would tell me whether I can give you estrogen or not. Right. So that would be important so to know time. ahead of time. And, and make for a more accurate diagnosis and treatment plan. Yeah. Without two visits instead of just with one. Uh, the next question <laughs> is one that I'm uh, particularly <laughs> involved in. And it came from our uh, website for the book, secretfemalehormone.com. It's from Stephanie. And she says, can you please explain who Brett Newcomb is? <laughs> What's his professional we background? We do explain that in the is, book. Is he a doctor like you? He said, I've watched several webcasts. And I'm trying to figure out who he is. <laughs> hmm. I am uh, a licensed professional counselor. That is a national credential in every state. 
there is licensure for counselors and they all have to take the same coursework and pass the same national exam in order to get a license. I have been in private practice as a family therapist in the state of Missouri for 32 years. I taught uh, at the university level at two, uni two universities for people who wanted to become a clinical therapist uh, focusing on uh, the courses that taught uh, skill sets how you do what you do. Not mm -hmm. some of the theory courses, but most of the skill courses. Uh, so Kathy and I got together because we each had overlapping patients. I was seeing people for family therapy issues that she was treating medically. She was seeing people medically who were also seeing me for therapy mm -hmm. issues. And we got permission to uh, speak to each other to coordinate interventions. Mm -hmm. And from our conversations, our mutual interests developed and we began to work together and to write this book, The Secret Female Hormone.com, uh, to address both the physical and psychological emotional issues of people who are going through all these hormone changes and the losses that they incur and who can get them back and get healthy again. And it's it, it's a great collaboration. It shows you both the medical and the psychological side of everything that hormones do. And, and there's always two sides to illness, and this covers both. Mm -hmm. So we, th we think that one plus one was more than two, and that the, that was a benefit for writing the book and, and having it described in a way that patients would understand. And he's a communicator, and he also helped me even though I talk to patients every day, translate certain things that I was unaware of <laughs> uh, speaking doctorese uh, <laughs> with, you know, and I was, so, so some of this has to do with being able to translate medicine into what, what patients need to hear and how they hear it. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it goes back to what's called the Cartesian split, uh, Rene Descartes, uh, the, it's called the mind-body split, and we both believe that those are two channels of information, both of which need to be accessed mm -hmm. for healthy living. And I, periodically, everybody wants me to be their psychologist, <laughs> and I have no training in that, except having maybe been on, you know, a couch somewhere talking to a psychologist, so, or a counselor. However, that's, that I have learned over time from Brett how to figure out whether someone needs to see someone for counseling while I'm treating them for hormones. So that's worked out nicely for me as well. Well, we have two more questions we want to cover today, and both of them are short. One is from Stella, who lives in New York and New Jersey, mm -hmm. and she is a 57-year-old African-American woman whose primary concern uh, is hair loss. Mm -hmm. And she wants to know if you can help her find a physician in the New York, New Jersey area who may do what you do mm -hmm. because she's read your book and, and discovers that hair loss is a treatable and recoverable phenomenon for most people. Well, the, one of the nice things about doing, uh, about having the book is that mm -hmm. I get letters from doctors who do what I do. And so I've been talking to a doctor who is opening a practice in, I thought New York City, but maybe New Jersey. You okay. read, you remembered it as New Jersey. Um, however, his, I will give you his name and his number in Raleigh, North Carolina, which is where he is now, but he's going to open an office there as well. So we've been sending patients back and forth, which is fun because I don't want patients to have to travel too far if they don't have to. So his name is Lewis H. Stocks, S-T-O-C-K-S. He's in Raleigh, North Carolina, and his office number is 919-850-0880. Now, we just know each other. I didn't train him, but I, it sounds to me like we are of like minds. So get in touch with him. He either has already or will shortly be opening uh, a practice in the New York, New Jersey metropolitan area. Mm -hmm. Then our last question is from Jeff. And Jeff says that he's looking for something that will make his skin more oily. Apparently, he has really dry skin. Mm -hmm. And he wants to know if uh, testosterone pellets would help with that. And if they do, how long he would need to stay on them to get a permanent fix. Okay. So oily skin, first of all, has to do with testosterone levels. But it also has to do with the receptor sites in your skin. Mm -hmm. Do you have a lot of receptor sites in the oil glands for testosterone? And it's not really testosterone that causes it. It's a, it's a byproduct of testosterone, dihydrotestosterone. In general, dihydrotestosterone is really the active uh, agent at the hair follicle and the, and the sebaceous gland 
uh, level. So basically, it's very individualized. I can't give you a number. I can't say. You have to have a testosterone of 800 or 400 or it, it has to do with the receptor sites where the, where the DHT is, is received, how much DHT you make out of your testosterone and how much testosterone is free or active. So all, all these things come so into play. So that. blood tests would help, right. but only a trial of the testosterone with his particular physiology would be able to get him to the point where his skin's not so dry. Some people would get oily like that. Some would people diet have anything would to take do with a that? lot. Yeah, I mean, you have to have oil in your diet. I mean, mm-hmm. basically, you have to have lipids in your diet. We try to have the healthy lipids mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, olive oil and avocados and nuts and that kind of thing gives you the building blocks of oil. So, Yes, you need that as well, but you can have yeah. that and no testosterone and not have oil in your skin. Yeah, because we don't know how old Jeff is. I, I was thinking more yeah. of uh, the many teenagers that I've taught through the years who go through a, a pimple cycle because right. their skin is so oily. Right. And, you know, we tell them, stop eating cheese, stop eating chocolate, stop drinking soda. Right. I mean, there are dietary things. I don't want to tell them to eat any of that. <laughs> no, I don't want to tell any patient to eat that stuff. I just want I want you to eat the healthy oils, and right. I'm assuming that he's older than a teenager. I Plus, teenagers... Right. You have many more uh, receptor sites right. when you're a teenager right. than you do as you get older. So that's one of the factors. Receptor sites die. And so we don't have the same effect from testosterone as we did when we were younger. So sometimes it's not the level of testosterone. It's a much more complex issue. And and sadly, it's probably a trial and error issue. Well, thank you all for writing these questions to us or comments to us. And for any of the others out there who have them, please get in touch with us. We like to know and get feedback about what concerns people have in the general population about the work that Kathy does and the testosterone pellets and the uh, hormone replacement therapies. So hopefully you'll continue to watch our podcast and come back next time. Thanks. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the BioBalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit BioBalanceHealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at Facebook.com slash BioBalanceHealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.